Hello, OAS family. It is time for another book review, and we are slowly but surely making our way through our significant book library with these reviews. And today we are reviewing a relatively new book uh, that is called Paint Fish Freely, and it is by the Art Book Company. Uh, now, this is a book that is not attributed to uh, one artist. So it was assembled by the company itself and features numerous artists, most of which are uncredited. So, but you can see that the work is of fairly high quality and it is an interesting book, especially for those people who are interested in this subject. So before we get into the uh, details of the book, let's talk about the general statistics. The book is a very common size. It is 11 and three quarter inches tall by eight and a quarter inches wide. It has approximately 127 pages and has text in both Chinese and English. So we're gonna get into the book now. So we have a cover here and table of contents talking about the different types of fish that are featured in the artwork. And we also have a smattering of both final compositions, elements of compositions and pictures here of uh, water lilies and lotus ponds. So we start off with uh, some general uh, techniques on painting fish. So we have these uh, different strokes that are used and so there is this sort of technique about using like a middle tip stroke. This is more of like a line stroke. So using the tip of the brush to the middle of the brush, using the brush straight on. So it describes and shows some examples about that stroke. And then it has strokes where you're using more of the side of the brush here. So this is where you're sort of angling the brush more and using the body of the brush and you can see that you get a different color result because you can you can load the colors from darkest to light when you do these sort of side tip strokes that they call them and then when you uh, paint the brush at an angle like that you will show the variation of color within a single stroke. So nice little bit of technique here. So a little bit more about uh, what they call ink penetration. So they're talking about sort of using light ink and then adding thick ink afterwards. And, uh, you know, they say that this gives the ink more dimension. So it's a nice, nice technique here and showing a sequential buildup of a fish that was painted with this sort of ink penetration method. And then they show the same technique uh, on a, sort of a cluster of these bushes or plants. So we have some aquatic, uh, some, some features on aquatic plants, which is nice because if you're gonna paint fish in their environment, you're often depicting them with aquatic plants and aquatic plants are very unusual. I spent many years actually managing a specialty retail store that sold ornamental tropical fish and aquatic plants. So uh, there, uh, there's a huge movement now to make these natural planted aquariums and they can be very, very beautiful. And you really get to appreciate these submerged underwater plants because they're just, they, they have a totally different, they have a different look and a different spirit when compared to terrestrial plants. So there's a little section here on a couple, few pages on painting these aquatic plants. So now we're getting into the specific fish. Okay. So uh, this one's called Taoyu, which is like, I think, knife fish. Um, and so uh, some of these fish. You know, it's very interesting talking about books that refer to specific animal species that originated in another language because, you know, each culture has their different names for each fish and they don't use scientific names typically. So they, these are common names. So identifying the fish can be a little tricky, but it's part of the fun to be able to experience that culture's take. And also which, which fish are endemic to the area 
and and you know the the cultural relationship to the fish so this is uh, one sort of more of a top view of the fish and this is a little bit more of a side view both with these sequential workups you know these four stage workups starting uh, with different parts of the fish and then building to the final rendering so here is they're calling swordfish, but I actually know what swordfish look like. And to me, these don't quite look like swordfish. They more look like a goldfish. But uh, ne nevertheless, it, it refers to these small fish as uh, swordfish. Or maybe this one is just the small fish. And then the Taoyu is uh, the swordfish that it's referring to is the is referring to the knife fish that that was before because it's kind of kind of shown in this final composition but regardless here is a, another uh, multi uh, stage build up uh, to these cute little abstract ink depictions of these small fish And then here are some final compositions with uh, small fish here in, seen in this very interestingly, interestingly composed lotus painting with some fish swimming underneath. And then we have this, which is a sort of fish swimming in the rain. So you have this depiction of the raindrops on the surface of the water. It's really cool when you can see the school of fish from the top. Uh, here are some jumping fish in the waves. So this is really great to see the spirit of the animal where you can see this leaping fish up in the air, this very rough water. And then here is another multi-stroke breakup of a uh, uh, buildup of this uh, small fish here on the left in ink. All right, so here, yes, this is what a swordfish looks like. So definitely... Uh, where well, you can see here this multi-stroke uh, buildup of this uh, swordfish, which is an ornamental tropical fish, live-bearing ornamental tropical fish. And the males are the ones that actually have the swords, and the females have more of a regular tail. So you can see a pair here in this final composition. And here is a multi-stage workup of just the male fish. Okay, here's a final composition of these uh, fish um, overview here under lotus leaves. And then here of a bunch of fish gathering around a little islet with some depiction of these water grasses. Couple more paintings featuring lotus here, finished compositions. So now we have a depiction of a different kind of fish, a little bit bigger uh, of a fish. Maybe, maybe something in the carp family. Doesn't really say this, the species, but this is more, more talking about painting the fish in what they call the freehand style or spontaneous style. So, so it talks about how they use a small brush to draw the eyes and then the middle tip of a big brush to draw the forehead and the lids for the gills and then how you finish the rendering of the body and they have a multi stage workup that goes builds all the way up to this finished rendering here and then shows some uh, fish in that style in final compositions so here is an overhead shot of a snakehead fish so these have become a little bit more known because they're imported for ornamental purposes and then they've been released because 
uh, people who bought them as pets just got tired of taking care of them because they live for a really long time and they get really big. And so they have uh, some of these people end up releasing them in waterways and then they become um, sort of a pest or a nuisance or even a threat to a local species. So this is a huge problem in Florida where they have these snakehead fish that have been released and just are breeding and don't have any natural predators because this is not where they are, uh, are originally from. So, but we have this overhead rendering of the snakehead here where you can see these little kind of fan shaped uh, type. And for those of you who know kind of game fish, you know, I think you could use the same overhead technique to depict um, like a scorpion fish or a cabazon, any of these sort of fish that like to sit on the rocks and they have these kind of distinctive pectoral fins like that. So more examples of some finished compositions featuring fish in different styles. Uh, I really like this. This was featured in one of our recent emails where you can see they just took like a wash brush, like a wide hockey or wash brush, and they did a stroke, and then they built the, the fish off of that single spontaneous stroke. So I think that is really neat uh, when someone's able to use a wash brush like that to do something interesting. So some more, uh, another sequential workup of a small fish. So you can see this side view, they build it up in five stages. Here are some interesting uh, paintings uh, with a, mixed with a lot of different calligraphy. So these are almost, almost kind of like record keeping pictures. So it'd be interesting to see if you know, there were fishermen who actually um, kept records this way. And then here is a uh, catfish. So let's see, we've got this one, two, three, four, five, six stage buildup of a uh, catfish. So you can see these very distinctive whiskers here on the catfish. And then here is a depiction of these catfish in these small little bowls. Maybe this is how they are sold in the open air markets. Uh, but uh, this is, is a painting of sort of capturing them in these tiny little bowls. And then here's a couple more catfish paintings. Here's one that's very loose. Love the style of this one where it's just very free and spontaneous and abstract just capturing the feeling or the spirit of the animal here. And then this one is much more detailed, uh, almost a little bit of like a gongbi style in the actual catfish, where you can see different uh, layers of shading employed and much more finer line work there. So a couple very interestingly colored fish depicted from the top here. So we have this final painting, and then this is a zoom in of that uh, painting here, and then we have another painting of the same very uniquely marked fish. Now we have a section on fancy goldfish. So this is a blending of, we have some pictures here. So these are actually photographs. And then we have some sketches ink sketches, and then we have actual paintings there. So here's like an um, uh, inspiration board for fancy goldfish. So here we have these three goldfish in separate bowls, kind of looking at each other. They have these telescopic eyes that you can see depicted here and their fan fancy fan tails. And then here is another white telescope eye goldfish with these very fancy fantails. 
these goldfish is like a whole world of how they're bred. You can see here, there's a depiction of what they call like a pearl scale, which they breed them to have these very shiny, almost iridescent scales. So you can see here that there's a pearl scale depicted on many of these fancy goldfish in these final compositions here. Some more finished compositions featuring fancy goldfish. Lots of great composition ideas here and lots of different styles represented. So that's the advantage of not having one particular artist is that you really do get a lot of different representations. Here we have like this calico coloring, which is really neat. I really like when the breeders uh, mix in, you know, the calico coloring is typically just sort of like an orange and uh, black coloring but when they have another color that gets worked in there like a blue i think it's very striking looking and so you can see that depicted here we have a multi-stroke uh, breakup the build up over here and then a final composition over here in this fan shaped piece of paper so more school of fancy goldfish here and a school of sword tails here some additional sort of ornamental tropical fish here look like fish in the live bearing family like that could be a female swordtail could be a platy and then we have bubble eye goldfish which are different than telescopic eyes so telescopic eyes actually have very large eyes and then these bubble eyes have this very interesting sort of like membrane below the eye that gets sort of filled and creates these sort of pouches underneath the eye so very interesting selective breeding that went into making that that fish and then a couple more fancy fantails with this attractive sort of calico coloring that has this additional blue here. And then some more beautiful final compositions of fancy goldfish. Lots of good chunk of this book is on fancy goldfish. Goldfish are hugely symbolic and popular in all different Asian countries. So they're a member of the carp family, of course, and they're small enough to keep inside and uh, also hardy enough to keep out in ponds. And so especially in these certain like uh, Asian, the tropical Asian countries where it stays warm most of the year. So here is an angelfish. Uh, this is a very distinctive, uh, like the king of all the angelfish, of all the different kinds of angelfish. This is like an autumn angelfish. So that is like the most striking large angelfish that exists. And so they have some pictures of this. This is a different kind of angelfish. And then here is more of like this bread coloration which you really don't see in the wild but when they breed them they mix like black and silver ones and they get this mottled sort of marking so some more paintings featuring angelfish and they're such an iconic ornamental tropical fish that you can imagine that there is a few pages dedicated to them also since they're so unusual looking and beautiful so we have some angelfish now we're getting into like less ornamental fish more like game fish or food fish so this is like a uh, uh, fish that they're referring to as a butterfish butterfish there's a whole family of fish that are considered butterfish but this looks to me like a pompano so they have pompanos in the pacific pacific and the atlantic uh, they get bigger in the Atlantic, but they are a very tasty fish that have a very unusual texture and flavor uh, that um, 
is really sought after and they're quite expensive when you buy them at the market. All right, so we have more of these sort of wild game fish in their in environments and you can see how they're here confronting each other, establishing territory that happens between the fish a lot. Then here is more of like a school of fish where we have uh, fish of different sizes, but the same species going together. And here is a depiction of a mandarin fish. So a multi, like a sequential buildup, starting from the eye and getting all the way here to this finished specimen. It's beautiful and really spirited with this open mouth and the eye looking back. So here is a type of perch. There's all different kinds of perch. This is kind of an unusual perch. It has a pretty big mouth for a perch. But it's interesting being both somebody who's kept ornamental fish and who uh, spends a lot of time fishing for game fish to, to, to try to guess what actual specific fish these are. And you know what, I find that most artists aren't that particular. It's like, oh, a fish is a fish, you know. It's like, uh, I'm more interested in capturing the spirit or my intention of embodied in this animal, especially uh, in, the, in the Chinese art. But as somebody who knows fish very well, I get very curious about, oh, what actual fish is this? So here is, we're starting to get into carp, which is a hugely symbolic fish it's a, a representative of prosperity and longevity. The carp live for, like, they can live for many decades, some up to 100 years. So, so we have more finished composition featuring carp. Then we have jumping carp, which is very commonly depicted iconically in some of ver some very famous paintings but it's also a nice way to showcase the fish because when it's sort of jumping out it, it's bringing the highlight and the feature to itself because it's really jumping out of its environment so more Finished paintings featuring carp. Now we're getting into like the decorative carp, you know, like koi. So you can see here. This is a nice buildup where we can see the details of how they depict the very distinctive scales on a carp. So they have this very ordered scale pattern on them. A couple groupings here. This is uh, sort of observing them against the, the moon. This is nice where you're like looking at the fish from the top. So you're seeing like a reflection of the moon on the surface of the water, but then you can also see the fish. And here, jumping, uh, a school of jumping carp. That's always exciting. And then here's a couple stage workup, mostly about how they sort of fill in the body of the fish with the various strokes, and then you can see them fill the detail in, including the color here at the end. This is specifically a grass carp here. And then a couple. So one, we see uh, fish in the net. So this one is like where it's actually breaking through the net. So a sense of symbolic breaking of the chains, getting, getting access to freedom here. Then here is a very seasonal depiction where we're showing some autumn leaves on the surface of the water. And then 
then this one where we have jumping spirited fish in this very fast moving stream. Another multi-stage build up with this top view of the carp. And some more final composition examples. Another one where they seem to be worshiping the moon. And then another one of them jumping here. So this is like a scene from a fishing village where you can see them like hanging the fish that have been caught. Maybe they're for display or for drying for whatever purpose they, they are hanging them typically in this fishing village. And then here's a colorful school of fish here being depicted. This is the another time where, this is the first time where we're seeing it like on a, a plate as a food item. And this is very much more common in Asia than it is here to serve a whole fish. You know, usually here what we're used to is bigger game fish and they cut them up into fillets so you can't recognize that it was an animal. It just comes to your plate as this sort of nondescript piece of protein that's been... But uh, in Asia, all, a lot, they will serve a whole fish. So you can see the, the details of the fish, the eyes, everything when it comes to the table. Some fish here with wisteria. It's the first time that we're seeing that, I think. And then some fish swimming underneath these really big leaves, maybe like banana leaves. Some very large leaves overhanging, and then you can see the fish swimming underneath. Some very uh, cool finished compositions here. You can see this jumping carp in this very iconic style, kind of Japanese style, or a style that has become associated with a very famous Japanese artist. And some, some catfish here, some smaller fish depicted here. This is a globe fish, which would be very interesting to see what species of fish that actually is but it's very unusual shape for a fish. And that is it. So this is uh, Paint Fish Freely by the Art Book Company. It's a very cool book. As you can see, it's filled with lots of sequential buildups and finished compositions, lots of inspiration, especially if you are fond of painting fish or would like to try your hand at painting fish. So you can purchase this book at our website at orientalartsupply.com. And thank you for watching and make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, we wish you happy painting.